Hello, and welcome to Sotom Brain Hub. My name's Charlotte, and I'm going to take you through this quick overview of hydrocephalus. So what is hydrocephalus? It's an excessive accumulation of cerebrospinal fluid, or CSF, in the brain. This causes the ventricles of the brain to enlarge, which typically causes increased intracranial pressure. If it's not treated, it can lead to permanent brain damage. There are lots of things that can cause hydrocephalus, so it's best to think about them in categories. Firstly, things that result in an increased CSF production, such as choroid plexus papillomas. Things that cause CSF obstruction, such as congenital aqueduct stenosis, tectal plate gliomas, or colloid cysts. And finally, things that result in decreased CSF absorption, such as meningitis, subarachnoid haemorrhage, and normal pressure hydrocephalus. The enlarged ventricles in hydrocephalus can often be seen radiologically. Hydrocephalus can also be classified functionally. There is obstructive or non-communicating hydrocephalus where the blockage is proximal to the arachnoid granulations of the arachnoid matter, or non-obstructive or communicating hydrocephalus, where the CSF circulation is blocked at the level of the arachnoid granulations. In young children, hydrocephalus may present as a rapid increase in head size. This is due to the fact that the bones of the skull have not yet fused. Other signs in children include poor head control, irritability, a bulging fontanelle, enlargement of the scalp veins, abducent nerve palsy, hyperactive reflexes, irregular breathing, and splaying of the cranial sutures. In older children, they are more likely to present with signs of raised intracranial pressure, including headache and vomiting. They may also have papilledema, gait changes, and an abducent nerve palsy, as this nerve is very sensitive to raised pressure. Thanks for watching. Find us on Facebook, Instagram, and subscribe to our YouTube channel to help explain the mysteries of the brain.